Okay, we're recording this video on Thursday, the 3rd of February, 2022. It's just gone 4.33 p.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So this video, we're going to talk about the European Forex contracts. We're going to talk about the Euro, Swiss Franc, British Pound, because they're all uh, starting to uh, set off in uh, an uptrend. And going to review a video I did probably about three weeks ago, uh, where I was looking for a breakout in the Euro and we got it, took a trade, and then I got out of that trade and the reasoning for that. Uh, then quickly just going to look at the indices, the S&P 500, the Dow and the NASDAQ and talk about uh, the supports that have come in on the daily charts there. But uh, this is my kind of longer swing trading type setup where I've got two charts side by side. The daily chart and the 460 minute charts on the forex contracts. 460 minutes, there are exactly three 460 minute bars in a daily chart. And I like looking at these kind of side by side. Sometimes we get our signals kind of lining up uh, the two charts kind of side by side, like we have in the euro right now. Sometimes you get the signals in the low or the higher time frame. So it's useful to look at them uh, uh, with the detail there. But uh, about three weeks ago, I put out a video saying that uh, I was have been looking for this breakout trade in the euro, and we finally got it with our triple signal when we busted above uh, the trailing stop on Better Pro Am. Remember, the triple signals happen when we, when we have our three non-correlated indicators come together. First of all, we have an exhaustion sell and bullish divergence, which says on volume momentum, we've kind of uh, reached an extreme and we backed off on that momentum. Second, uh, we got uh, the background printed red, which means we're oversold on better sine wave, which is a price only based indicator. And then the average trade size is showing us the professional activity. We had a little cluster during December showing all the professional activity that was starting to get involved. And as soon as we bust above uh, the trailing stop, we have all three indicators go off together and that gives us our triple signal. But uh, that breakout only uh, worked for a day, a day and a half. We immediately kind of got into trouble and we reversed and went the other way. Um, so I was in long into that trade and I got out of that trade with a small loss uh, because on the tick bar charts, uh, we had a couple of reversal signals that just didn't look right. So uh, this is what I was seeing on uh, the tick bar charts, the 1500 and the 4500 tick bar chart. And they both had reversal signals back here, but we can see it kind of clearly on the 4500 tip bar chart. We have blue professional bars. There was our breakout kind of area. Blue professional bars into 15, not quite 15. And then we reversed and kind of went the other way and it just kind of gave up. So out of that trade. But uh, as soon as we got into 11 and a half down here, which was a big swing uh, on the downside for that uh, reversal trade, didn't tr take that triple on the way down, but we had kind of a reverse signal going on. Blue professional bars kind of stepping in, um, exhaustion sell, uh, bullish divergence, and we've got our oversold background and we get a triple going the other way at uh, 12, 12 and a half, and it reached uh, 14, 14 and a half uh, with today's activity, all based on uh, what's happening with the ECB. So uh, Christine Lagarde speaking today, I think, talking about inflation in Europe and how at some point they're going to have to address that. So they're not uh, announcing any kind of uh, raising of rates or anything like that, but I think all of this is being driven by the anticipation of potential raising of rates. So it was uh, an ugly little trade. It was a false breakout, kind of went the other side of there. And then with the last three days activity, it's reversed and signaled again on the daily chart. So the euro um, chart is looking strong. We're going to have a rally in the euro. Uh, so although I got out of that trade uh, long euro, um, I actually took the trade in the Swiss franc because it looked better on the Swiss franc when we reached that bottom. And here's what I was seeing on my charts. So similar type setup. We were in a range here at about eight for some months um, on the Swiss franc. We couldn't get kind of lower than 107. Blue professional bars kind of come in. We have our little bit of a uh, triple signal go off here. But what I really liked was on the lower time frame, the 460 minute chart, these blue professional bars at seven and a half just got the move going and bang, we uh, kind of took off to the upside. It was also looking good on the tip bar charts. And so I'm long into the Swiss franc. So I'm kind of playing the European strength in um, uh, Forex uh, with long um, Swiss franc at the moment. And we've got to 109 but we've kind of rested there for the time being. So um, hopefully uh, this will get above 19, 110, and then we'll just see where this thing goes. And also on the British pound, 
And if you look on the daily chart on the British pound, you can see all the blue professional bars kind of came in in December on the British pound. You're like, what? Why are people buying the British pound uh, in, in December? Because um, I don't think, you know, the lockdowns were still um, being tightened up in December. But that was kind of, you know, professional prescience uh, at that point, you know, holding it at uh, 32. I suppose previously it had been an area where the professionals were interested uh, down here. So when it kind of uh, reached that 132 level, uh, they were saying, yep, let's let's buy this. So we had a triple signal on the British pound as well. So um, there you go. Um, it's kind of a question of just ignore the news and, and uh, check the charts. But uh, it looks like we're going to be uh, rallying in, in the European kind of forex um, markets. So just a final point, just to say that we're not really seeing the strength in the Aussie dollar and the Canadian dollar uh, right now. Normally, I like trading the Aussie because it's kind of a high beta uh, kind of forex contract. Um, but this move seems to be um, specific to the European uh, kind of zone with Swiss franc, euro and uh, British pound. So don't know. Uh, we'll see if you know the Japanese yen and the Aussie and the Canadian kind of start to strengthen against the US dollar. But at the moment, all of the signals are happening in those euro uh, area forex contracts. So uh, lastly, just to say we have been caught by supports on the daily charts on these equities. I mean, we've uh, seen that uh, we had a big bounce off the 42.50 kind of level in the S&P. Uh, we never got down to 41 or um, 4,000 on uh, the E-mini, which is a shame. Um, we can see here uh, we've got our pullback level kind of come in. But said this whole move on uh, the S&P 500 wouldn't be over until we saw that pullback to end of trend uh, kind of move be put in on the daily charts. That's what we've got over the last couple of days. That support has kind of come in. So um, that pullback to end of trend rolled out uh, in the other indices kind of some weeks or months ago, depending on the index that you look at. But this is the first time that we've seen it on the uh, e-mini contracts. So that's what's going on there. And it also means that we've been caught by support uh, on particularly the uh, Dow chart. So this is this where we break a support level and we're caught by the next highest time frame. So on that daily chart there, the uh, intermediate time frame came in as a support. We're having a bounce from there. Then lastly, just to show you the uh, NASDAQ chart, we're still below supports on these daily time frames here, but we've obviously run into uh, trouble with our exhaustion sell down here. The next level uh, that we should be finding some resistance is where we come back up to the daily chart where the uh, slow and the fast lines kind of on better sign wave kind of come together, loop around, and that'll be some area of resistance where we put in um, whatever that pattern is, resistance to uh, support on the way down. So uh, it's going to be messy, um, I think, for uh, the next you know couple of weeks as we roll through this. It's not a kind of a straight play uh, on the way down, I'd suggest. So um, yep, we'll just have to kind of take it day by day. Anyway, so I hope your trading is going well.